Hi, um, my name is Joanna Paich. Um, I am a, an assistant professor at ISEG and I do research in the area of matching markets. Game theory is the analysis of strategic decision making. Um, so, for example, I was a little bit late for this interview. So, and it happens that when I decide to come to ISEG, so when I come to ISEG in the morning to teach or when I came to this interview, I had to take some decisions. So I decided, I was deciding between walking and driving and then I decided to take the car um, and I took several decisions so during so I, I had to choose the path uh, to, to get here to Isaac and the time it took me to get here uh, the time it usually takes me to he get here depends on my decisions but it also depends on the decisions of other people who are also commuting who are also trying to get um, to their workplaces or that are driving around the city so in this case uh, the outcome, so the, the time it took me to get here depended on my decision, but it, it also depends on the decisions of other people that are um, uh, and, 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 uh, that are also trying to, that we're also trying to get somewhere. Um, so whenever you have uh, such kind of interaction, so situations in which the result does not depend on a single individual decision, but it depends on the decisions of several individuals, several um, agents, then you have a game. And uh, game theory analyzes these games or these, uh, um, um, these situations in which there is strategic interaction. You can basically apply game theory to uh, everything, to many situations in your daily life. And in business it is also important because um, Business is interaction, so interaction with customers, interaction with suppliers, interaction with other firms with whom a firm is competing in the market, um, uh, interaction within the firm between employees of a, of, of a single firm. So uh, having said this, um, I get the feeling that if you can apply game theory to uh, everything, Sometimes, well, this may mean you cannot, it, it's difficult, it's actually hard to apply it to a particular thing. And so, game theory, for example, it was used to explain why Cold War happened. Um, but you easily, so you get, I, I get the feeling that you could also have used game theory to actually explain why an actual war broke out. I'm going to tell you about two um, applications of, or two uh, um, fields of game theory um, that are actually two very uh, well-known applications in game theory and that have led some game theorists to be actually uh, hired by firms and, and other institutions um, to, to, to do their job. So the first application is auction theory. So um, 20 years ago, I think, so roughly, so it, I think it was 1994, um, a very well-known economist that was working in Stanford, uh, Stanford University, he was hired by the US government to design an auction uh, to sell um, uh, wireless uh, licenses uh, to transmit um, uh, through wireless uh, networks, communication networks. And, and at the time he designed this auction and then these auctions were repeated um, in many, many countries, many European countries. A few months ago we had an auction here, uh, the, the fourth generation um, spectrum auction. So you actually have game theorists that are hired by the government to um, uh, design auctions that then are used to assign uh, these uh, spectrum rights. Um, and um, so in fact, what, what these game theorists are doing is designing the rules of the game, but then the bidders, so uh, telecommunication uh, companies will play uh, by bidding. Some of these telecommunication companies then hire other game theorists to help them to play such a game. Um, and this has happened uh, in telecommunication, but it also happens with um, in, in, in uh, electricity purchase agreements, in um, um, 
auctioning off rights to pollute. So there are many things that are being auctioned. And, and in these auctions, uh, game theorists are helping to uh, um, design the game on one hand, and on the other hand, helping bidders to play their game. So this is one very important application. And more recently, a lot of research is also being done and um, with respect to um, position auctions. Position auctions are uh, auctions uh, of advertising space. So whenever you search for something, if you type whatever, sunglasses in Google or in Yahoo or in other search engines, um, well, you will get a bunch of ads. And you have ads on the top and ads on the bottom. And usually ads that are on the top will get more clicks. So uh, firms will actually um, play uh, an auction game in order, and they will bid for, uh, for advertising space and they will be naturally willing to pay more um, for uh, ads that are on the top rather than ads that are on the bottom. So, and there's a lot of research being done on this. Uh, and in fact, um, the, 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 there are uh, the chief economist at uh, um, Google he, he, he has worked extensively on this, and other economists have helped Microsoft and Yahoo design their own auctions. In these markets, money has, may have a role, but it's a limited role. So just to give you a very, um, um, uh, a very simple example, well, in the job market, money decides some things, but it does not decide everything. So you may want to work for a very well-known company like Google, whatever, but you can only work for Google if they actually want to hire you. So you you can choose, but you also have to be chosen. This is a little bit of what is happening, what is going on in matching markets. So the price adjusts, but it it's it does not it cannot adjust uh, uh, enough so that uh, uh, you get buyers and sellers, so, so, so it's, it's, not, it's not the price that does all the work in matching buyers and sellers. So this happens in job markets, it also happens um, in um, schools, universities and students. So if a student wants to go to some particular university, well he may not be admitted. Uh, and this has nothing to do with tuition fees. He may be willing to pay the tuition fees, but he may just not be admitted. The, me the university may not want him, that particular student. So, um, so these are uh, the, the so-called matching markets. Um, and uh, matching, in fact, there they are uh, uh, many, many important changes in a, person, uh, in a person's life has to do or is determined by a matching market. So which school a person goes to, which university a person gets into, um, uh, which job a person gets, whom a person marries with, and even some health issues um, are um, matching problems. Matching theory is the, the my area of research. Um, just to give you uh, just an idea of what can be um, made and or what can we, what we can do, what, what I have learned in, in matching theory. Um, uh, well, most theory um, uh, in, in, in this area is, is, or most papers are actually theory papers. Um, and one important assumption of those, of all of those papers, is that um, people know in this market they know everything. So basically, they know who they are. They know who the other agents in the market are. They know, for example, uh, they know that they want to work for Google, but they also know wh to which companies all the other workers in the market want to go to, and they know who Google wants, and they know who the other companies want. Um, and so this is a basic assumption of almost every theoretical paper. So one thing I did together with um, my co-authors is to check what happens whenever well people don't, don't know everything, which is actually a very uh, reasonable assumption. So I know what I want, but I only have a rough idea of what the others want. So what happened? So we actually we conducted an experiment to see how the level of information agents will actually affect the, how they behave in this matching market and then the final outcome. So this is just an example of what I do. Um, let's see.